we follow like that five by five rule. So if you have a piece of customer content, see how you can just chop it up five ways and come out with a ton of different ways to promote that. B2B Content Strategist is the podcast where you'll hear actionable advice and strategic guidance from content marketing leaders. I'm Amy Woods, CEO of Content 10X, and I sit down with leading B2B marketers to discuss how they overcome challenges with limited time and resources and execute winning campaigns time after time. If you want to improve and streamline your content marketing, keep listening. Hello and welcome to this episode of B2B Content Strategist. I'm your host, Amy Woods, founder of Content 10X. And in this episode, I am delighted to share with you my conversation with Leslie Barrett. Now, Leslie is the Senior Director of Customer Marketing at Sendoso, which is the leading sending platform that facilitates e-gifting and physical gifting from companies to employees and customers. And Leslie explains more about what Sendoso does in our conversation. She's also the founder of CMA Soulmate, which is her personal brand and passion project where she aims to help other customer marketers. In this episode, Leslie talks about Sendoso's customer marketing strategy and why she came up with her own attribution model. She also shares insights into the current priorities that they are focusing on and why it's constantly shifting. Leslie explains their five by five rule that helps to streamline processes and also how she used ChatGPT to create her mom the best Mother's Day card ever. Leslie has so much energy. She's full of innovative ideas around customer marketing, and it's such a great conversation. I'm so looking forward to sharing it with you. Let's dive in. Leslie, welcome to B2B Content Strategist. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm very much looking forward to this conversation, so thank you for coming on the show. In order to get started, I think what would be best is, in summary, please could you Just let us know a bit about yourself and also a few sentences about Sendoso. So your role and what you guys do. Sure. Yeah. So I'm Leslie Barrett. I'm the Senior Director of Customer Marketing and Advocacy and Evangelism and Community. No, Um, I, I wear many hats. I've been there for about four, five years. I stopped counting. And I also have my personal brand, which is the CMA Soulmate, where I just, I have so much content inside and it's almost therapeutic to just get it out there to the world and help other customer marketers out. They need help in getting started and there's not a lot of content out there on the internet. So like my shtick is that I always want to create content that you can't find anywhere else. So if someone thinks of something, I want them to go to my newsletter. I want them to go to my courses. I want them to go to my eBooks and in there, they will find the answers. So it's like a passion project of mine. It really doesn't feel like work at all. Yeah. So Sendoso is the leading sending company. We send e-gifts, perishables, Amazon sends experiences, pizza from New York City to really build human stronger relationships with prospects and customers. So it's a really special place. I've fully drank the Kool-Aid, ate the dog food, whatever you want to call it. I'm here for the long run. Um, They'll have to just drag me out by my heels. I absolutely love this company. And it's just a really special place. And what is a typical profile of a customer that you work with? Yeah, we work with a lot of, I would say first is an ABM manager working on their account-based marketing, because when you are marketing to your target accounts, you know, your budget can increase a little bit because the ROI on account-based marketing campaigns is relatively high. And so they're able to spend some money on gifts for their bigger customers, their larger ticketed customers, if you will. Then I would say there's a lot of demand gen folks, right? So they are sending gifts. I would say 
the whole funnel, top of the funnel, all the way down. And they're really experimenting and they're innovative marketers who are A-B testing with gifts and paving the way. And so my job is to speak with them and capture their success story and then get it out there to the world. Then I would say there's field marketers that are also using us for events. So it's a an amazing use case to get people to attend events, to incentivize them, get the guilty, oh gosh, they sent me this, I should probably attend <laughs> type of feel. And then it just branches out, right? Like we have CS teams, customer success teams that are using us to build stronger relationships with their customers, all the way to HR to welcome new employees to the company. So the use cases are endless, really. Yeah, I can relate to quite a few of those use cases. As a business owner, sending gifts to our clients, sending gifts to like partnerships that we have with other businesses, always wondering where to send gifts to people who refer our work, employees as well. I fall into a few different use cases, just depending obviously on the need and the purpose. So I relate. <laughs> in terms of your team, but what does your team look like in terms of the people and the different roles within that? Sure. So <laughs> customer marketing is silly. We're not there yet to be able to build teams because we're looked at as maybe a kind of fluffy role where we're just like creating these advocates and, and there's not much ROI from customer marketing. People don't know how to measure it. So that's why I came up with my own attribution model. So I can prove the return that we're getting from our campaigns as well as our entire department. And that's like including headcount and operational costs. So I have been able to prove the value and teach them how I would scale the team. So I just have one person under me right now, thank God, because I do run the community. Our advocates at Sendoso are called Super Senders. So we have a Super Sender Slack workspace and he's in there just making sure that, uh, shout out to Danny Lou, hey. He's in there just making sure that there's engagement and everybody's helping one another. There's a beautiful quote out there. A wise man learns from his mistakes. A wiser man learns from other mistakes. But the wisest person of all learns from each other's successes, right? And so that is like the best way to learn is just like to pick other people's brains and copy and clone what other people are doing. So I love that. And that's my mantra. So yeah, I've seen other teams break out customer marketing into three kind of separate roles. One is like customer life cycle, right? So that's like campaigns throughout the entire customer journey and plugging content in at the right time. Love that. And then there's advocacy, which is a totally separate piece of the pie, which is marketing by our advocates, right? So case studies, video testimonials, speaking opportunities, and getting the voice of the customer out there in the world to like, create pipeline. And then the third one is like fo solely focused on upsell and cross-sell campaigns and the real like selling and maybe some more targeted ABM type campaigns to folks and bringing in more and expanding that customer lifetime value. So that's the dream for me <laughs> to have a team like that. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. In terms of your content strategy, so your overarching content strategy, I can see that you guys, there's lots of content. You've got your Elevate event, you've LinkedIn, loads of followers, lots of content. You've got webinars, animations, videos, YouTube, obviously you're doing quite a bit on there as well. What's the priorities for this year, I guess, from a content strategy perspective? Yeah. So it's definitely shifted as the company has shifted as the economic state has shifted, right? So it's a fend for yourself situation as of now, right? Like we went from a grow at all cost model to a consolidate budget cuts, all that. So we are back to being scrappy, 
And in customer marketing, the, co the content that I need and, and my kind of priorities are educational content. So that's for that customer journey to plug in the right content at the right time. I need exclusive content, which is going to be a combination of me listening for what these advocates and our most successful customers are doing and needing. And then go, I'm creating that for them. And it's exclusive content just for my advocates in order for them to level up their sending and send more within the platform. And then the third one, of course, is that customer led content. So that's going to help sales close new business. And that is your case studies and videos and reviews, because those do move the needle. They're very hard to track who is reading the case study that you spent 15 hours on, who is, which one of the prospects read a G2 review and then decided to sign the contract. So small little plug. I teach that in my, my ROI course. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're working on. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. I was wondering, is there a particular format type, video, written, visuals, graphics? Is there any key format that you see, especially from an ROI perspective, uh, that converts the best? We haven't done a lot of video in a while. I would say that video is king. It's no secret that we prep for these podcasts. And one of the questions down below is if you could invest in something like budget was not an issue and you can invest in like this grandiose campaign, what would it be? And this might just be like a passion thing for me, but it would be video, right? It would be TikToks. And you could just think about the possibilities of video with Sendosa. We have this massive warehouse massive. Like people think we're like sending from closets. No, we have 15 square blocks of this big warehouse. And like what a video of like how your gift is routed on all the whole entire process of actually sending your gift. So cool. And then we partner with all of those perishable vendors. So let's do videos of me eating all of these cupcakes and <laughs> like cookies and donuts. So yeah, you can see this is like something that I would want you know, selfishly for me. And then I'm really outgoing and I love the camera. And so I, to create all of these talks and then upload the TikToks onto LinkedIn and then really drive that brand ambassador evangelism thing. That's what I would really want to get into. I know I didn't answer your question. I went a little rogue there, but I, I, some people will argue that case studies, nobody reads those, but it turns out that they do. And I would have been one of those people that are like, oh God, you're really going to go to that traditional case study. No one reads those. But after I did my research before I created my course, man, they read those. And it is one of the primary reasons that they feel comfortable signing the contract. Yeah, I completely agree with you. We find that ourselves sometimes, even when people are preparing for a discovery call and they're doing a little bit of additional prep as to what we do, the number of times people say at that part of the sales process as well, by the way, I really enjoyed reading this case study. And I always remember one guy said to me, because it's a case study video we had, he was like, oh boy, I must have watched that video 10 times or something like that. Case studies are important and especially in like sales enablement for sure. I loved what you said about the videos, by the way. I had all these like thoughts going around in my head about not just the behind the scenes. So seeing how do you make these gifts and send them in the warehouses and all of that. But then if you had video crews that followed some of the gifts to the delivery and you saw the person opening it and things like that as well and stuff, the stories behind it, there's so much storytelling that must be. The unboxing. Exactly. Unboxing. Yeah. So popular. <laughs> yeah. There'd be so much you could do. <laughs> My four-year-old watches unboxing videos of like trains, like these other kids opening train sets. And I'm like, I think this is a thing. I think this isn't, is a thing. Yeah. Isn't one of the most highly paid YouTubers or maybe YouTube children, a child that unboxes gifts. Yeah. <laughs> and they get sent all this and they make 
Yeah, I could be that person. I was just going to say, maybe we're just in the wrong jobs. I have to unbox things all day. (laughs) I love that. In terms of all the different work that you do, obviously, you're very busy and you've got lots of hats on without a huge team behind you. So I imagine you need to really try and optimize some of the recurring processes that you have. Is there anything in particular that you've done to make life easier by streamlining the work that you do? Yeah, we follow like that five by five rule. So if you like have a a piece of customer content, see how you can just chop it up five ways and come out with a ton of different ways to promote that. And I'm sure your whole audience knows what I'm talking about, but I think it's, it's important to optimize, but you want to make sure that you're iterating too. I feel like this job, and I'm talking just like content or customer marketing in particular, we are go to the next one, go to the next case study, go to do it, run another campaign and create these upsell campaigns. And, but you have to make sure that you go back to that customer journey mapping, right? I'm hoping that companies are looking at the entire customer journey and all the comms or communications that are going out and at what point of the customer journey. And then you're able to see like white spaces of, okay, there's a, there's like a couple months here where there's no content is being given to our customers. Let's go ahead and fill that. And then also these are a little outdated now and that can go fast. Things can change in your UI for your platform so quickly. And the way I think customer marketers minds work is I set it up. I got to move on to the next. We'd have very little resources, very little budget. And I'm trying to change that. Like with my personal brand and my voice, like I'm trying to, you know, change that whole, I want us to have more attention, more resources, more everything. So. I just, I need to literally put it on my calendar to go back in and check, check everything, right? Go back to the campaign you ran three months ago. (laughs) Let's see what worked, what didn't work, and then how to iterate in the next campaign that you do. So it's just so easy just to forget about everything and move on to the next. But I think that customer journey map is like a pretty cool tool to have. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I think it can be really overlooked can't it to go back and iterate and improve it's not like the kind of sexy side of marketing which is (laughs) the work which is more about like the new content and all of that but actually there's a lot more to be said for going back and optimizing what you already have iterating updating etc so I completely agree with you it's very topical but I've been asking this throughout all the episodes of season two of b2b content strategists and it's around ai so I'd love to know, have you been embracing it? Have you been playing with it? Love, hate, chat GP. Where do you stand on that? Love it. Love <laughs> it. I use it. I just used it for a Mother's Day card. Because it's like, I'm 40, right? For 40 years, I've been writing the same thing to my mom in this card. And I'm like, ah, chat GPT, write a funny, a witty, yet heartwarming you know, note from daughter to mother for Mother's Day. And it's just gives me such a wonderful response. So wonderful. In fact, that I will, when it's nailed it, I write back and I'm like, oh my God, I love you. You did such a good job. (laughs) Like it's my, like it's my friend or something. But yeah, we use it a ton for puns. So Sendoso, we're punny. It's just so easy to be punny. Like if we send coffee, we're like sending like a just expressoing how much we value your or like I like you a latte. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna uh, say a latte. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it helps with our our puns and our messaging and, and really just trying to make the prospect or customer laugh and just get out of that kind of corporate mind space and stuff like that. So yes, I love it. Big thumbs up. Yeah, that's great. And it's it's only going to get better, isn't it? That's awesome. 
Just a super quick break from this conversation to let you know that if you're a B2B technology or professional services company and you want help with streamlining your content operations, outsourcing your content repurposing is the number one way to produce more high quality content and boost your ROI without putting any more pressure on your team. In fact, it could save your team up to 30 hours per week. We offer content repurposing services for video and audio content. Whether you have a show or you're launching a brand new one, maybe you have an archive of awesome content, be it webinars or a virtual event, or you want help creating thought leadership content that we can repurpose, we've got you covered. Head to content10x.com to see how we can help you and start increasing your efficiency and the value you get from your content. Now back to the conversation. What about uh, with regards to what you do in-house and what you tend to outsource? I imagine that there are different external partners that you work with from time to time or perhaps on a regular basis. Do you have a firm position on that in terms of the key expertise that you think should always retain in-house and expertise that is is better sourced out, outside? Yeah, that's a good question. So I have had the luxury of working with a content marketer and... We were Thelma and Louise, man. We just peanut butter jelly. I like to say chocolate and peanut butter. Those are my favorite combinations. Yeah, it was like just a wonderful working relationship. Hey, Brittany. And (laughs) I miss you. It was just, we were a team. And one quarter, we just worked so well together that we were able to pump 16 case studies in one quarter out. So I am all for an in-house content marketer, 100%. In a perfect world, I want one for top of the funnel and one for post-sale. I've never been able to work with a content marketer strictly on customer-based content. Um, that I haven't had that luxury yet. And that would be, that's ultimately the dream is to, that's the team. Right. There, there would just be no stopping. I feel very strongly about that. There'd be just no stopping us. And I believe retention rates would be through the roof. I believe the expansion would be so much easier. So I hope that happens one day. Yeah. One day unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. In terms of your most memorable marketing initiative, Is there something that jumps out to you, something that just not necessarily the best, that's a challenging question, but just really memorable? And what was the the plan, the outcome of that? Two come to mind. So I'm the creator of the Sendy Awards program at Sendosos. We have the Sendies, which is based on the the Dundies from The Office. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, I thought I recognized that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that's my baby, right? I absolutely love the award ceremonies and that whole process is just so much fun for me. The nominations and also just the reason why I love it so much is so heartwarming with all of these people so excited and wanting to win an award and their stories around what they've sent and people are coming out of the woodworks. Wow. You're not even, you're not even in my advocacy program and you're seeing all this ROI. Like, why didn't you tell me about this? So discovering and building new relationships with customers and you build the strongest relationships with these customers because you're moving so fast. You need to create like seven to 10 or however many awards you have, you need to create those case studies in like turnaround time of two months. So you're working really fast and setting deadlines. And if, you know, they don't meet them, then we got to move on to maybe the next winner or something. But the content that you can extract from those winners and how you can share it and add like a multiplier on top of that with their company promoting it as well. That was a pretty great one. I also, this is just like random, but for my Cindy award winners, I, as a thank you, right. Or as a congratulations, I set up a virtual experience, which is something that Sendoso offers of a drag queen show in Portugal. Yes. So they're in Portugal and they have a whole show 
like we're in the audience and it was lovely. They made it completely personalized. So all of the award winners are sitting in the virtual audience and the instructors are wearing gong earrings, Zendesk hat, and they're calling out their names by name and by company and making cracking jokes. It was like a comedy plus drag show. It was just a really memorable experience. And like afterwards, I was like, how can I ever top this? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I think it was like one of the most memorable events that they and myself have ever been to. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Do you have any memorable marketing initiatives that are perhaps memorable in a slightly different way because it was more of a funny tale of marketing that didn't quite go to plan, any kind of cautionary tales? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's like a good and bad story. Like it, it was bad. It flopped, but then I iterated. Okay. I'm not going to just let something die that I put a lot of effort into. I'm like a pit bull like that. Like I, I got to get the bone. I got to figure out how to make it better. So anyway, it was a campaign to, it was like an ABM campaign targeting my, targeting customers that I want to get into my advocacy program. So a stat that I have is that three months after they become a super sender, they increase their spend in the platform by 34%, which is huge. And so if you go ahead and take your target accounts and you tell your executives, like, you need to give me money so I can recruit these folks to get in there so I can increase their spend by 34%. It's an, it's easy math and it's a no brainer. So that's what they did. They gave me money and that doesn't happen very often. So I really had to make this work. So I ended up sending a where's Waldo book in a bright orange bubble mailer. So I was trying to like tap into nostalgia. I was trying to tap into, they don't receive a massive bright orange bubble mailer and then they don't receive gifts in general. And so that would stand out. And then the messaging would stand out. And the messaging was, it's time you found your people. Cause you only like, gotta find Waldo. And, and it was a QR code to scan to go to a landing page where I can track if they landed on it and fill out the form. Not one person clicked on that QR code. No one used it. So I thought that was weird. And then I think I had seven signups or something from like people just going to the website and being like, okay, fine. So I was hell bent on trying to understand where the gap was and what just happened. <laughs> Sendoso has an address confirmation feature, so they need to confirm their address first before they get it. And so I think like a very small percentage of them even accepted that or even clicked on that. So it turns out, short, long story short, it turns out that they didn't know who I was. Like, I always think I like the face of the customer base and but I am, but like in my advocacy program. So not everyone knows me. So it turns out that we redid it and we had it come from the CSM who has that relationship and the messaging tweaked the messaging slightly that said, I'm sending you a gift. I'm nominating you to be a part of something. So it just makes them feel special. They know they actually open it because they know the person. And then it was like, oh, okay, we got some killer results now and I can go back to my executives and be proud of the results. Yeah, it's like you said, isn't it? Like about iterating and learning, not necessarily learning from failure, but actually turning it into a success and then learning from the success of that. Yeah, it sounds like a really awesome campaign. It, obviously, they were just the reasons the first time, but it's brilliant that you turned it around and turned it into something. Um, I love that. <laughs> it's, it's a great story. So some quick fire questions one takeaway tip that you would give other marketers who are just starting out in their career so just one if you could go back to early stage career yourself and just give yourself a little tip what would it be yeah i think it would just be like a i think it applies to like life and career and that's just all about like 
respect and trusting your gut. If you're being respected in your work environment and or in your personal relationships, if your work environment is toxic and weighing on your mental health, then, you know, you just got to pull the plug at some point and realize what is more important. Now, hey, I know not everybody's in that situation to be able to pull the plug and just get out of there. Just making small moves every day to lean in that direction. But yeah, it would just be about trusting your gut in all situations and then using that to really go out of the box as well. So don't be afraid to take risks. And your gut is probably going to be like, wait, no, I don't know. But you just have to like outweigh the, see what is available to you or ask for forgiveness. No, this is terrible advice. This is going awry. <laughs> but yeah, no, to sum up, just try to be daring but then trust your gut at the same time. I love that. I Every time I go against my gut, I always regret it. You should, yeah, you should go with your gut. <laughs> I completely agree. Is there a typically overlooked or undervalued tool that you regularly use that you would recommend to other marketers? No, I was just trying to think if there was anything as it relates to content. Yeah, exactly. Anything in your workflow that you really have come to depend on that you don't, maybe hear that many other people talk about or anything like that? Yeah, I would probably go with your customer base. I think that's a very overlooked <laughs> secret weapon that may be overlooked slightly, but if you are creating that exclusive content to get people to engage more with your platform, then what a better way to figure out what they need than sending out a survey. Even if you don't have time, send out a survey that maybe asks those questions. I'm really into these days creating like benchmarks and polling people, surveying them to find out data, and then being able to use those in upsell conversations that says, do you know that your peers have X percent more of this? And here's a way how you can catch up. So yeah, I like that answer. I like that. It's good. <laughs> we already touched on this actually. So the final kind of killer question around if you could create any content and you had limitless budget, limitless resources, anything. Now you already mentioned that you, it would all be a big video play, like lots of TikToks, lots of video. Anything more to add to that? I know we already talked on it briefly, but uh, yeah, what would you do? <laughs> Yeah. So something that I have seen that's unique and different. And as a marketer, I like know that it's automated. It, it, are those people who are sending you in mails in LinkedIn, holding up a sign that says your name, right? <laughs> we need more of that, but not that, right? Cause that's like being used now, but what's the next sign play, right? Like uh, I need more out of the box thinking with content. Like I don't have an answer for this right now, but yeah, leaning into those wild ideas. I just talked to Scott Logan. I was on his podcast, Scott Logan, the VP of Chronologic. And he has, he's all about embracing cringe like the cringe worthiness of campaigns. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's so hard for me to do. I, I cannot stand the cringe. I cringe still about something I did 15 years ago. So it's very hard for me to embrace the cringe, but I think there's a lot of learning that can happen with the cringe. And then you can just consider that a success. So I, don't, yeah. I agree with you. I'm the same. I cringe, <laughs> cringe. I just, I need to be pushed to do the things that I find really cringy. And I think I have a really high threshold in terms of some people probably don't think that's cringe, but I'm like, that is really cringe. But I, I agree with you. I think there are people who need to push people like myself to embrace these things because just because I think it's cringe doesn't mean that it would work, not work with someone else or that they would. So I like that. <laughs> so to the, I said the final question, but this is the final question. So on B2B content strategists, it's all about talking to true leaders in B2B marketing like yourself. 
is there a particular person that you think that to you meets that criteria that you think is awesome in B2B marketing that we should really try and speak to? Yeah. Uh, Scott Logan, <laughs> if you're, I think that's a very interesting topic and you know, these cringy campaigns and bringing the fun back into marketing and always innovating. I think he would be a great person to talk to. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scott's not on my radar, but straight after this, I'm going to go check Scott out and thank you so much for mentioning him. I think a conversation where he can discuss fun and embracing the cringe and all that sounds fantastic and right up my street as well. So thanks, Leslie. And thank you so much for coming on to the show. I really appreciate your time and I'm sure on behalf of everyone who's listening they will agree that this has just been really valuable really interesting insightful conversation so thank you so much for coming on B2B Content Strategist. Thank you so much for having me this was really fun. And where do you want people to go? Yeah I am on TikTok under CMA Soulmate so that's always a fun one if you want to see funny videos I think they're funny and then I'm on LinkedIn Leslie Barrett can easily find me there. And inside my profile, you'll find all of my assets from my newsletter to my courses. And most recently, I am coming out with an ebook on account based customer marketing. It's a wonderful 70 plus page educational ebook and then a 50 page playbook of all the plays that everyone can start running. It took me a while to complete, very proud of this one. So get your copy now. Oh, congratulations on that. That sounds like an absolutely epic piece of extremely useful content. Who doesn't love a playbook, hey, as well as, as the ebook? So thanks, Leslie. I'll make sure to put a link to all of that in the show notes where people can just go straight on from whatever podcast app you listen to this on YouTube, reading it on the, on our website, click that link and go and check those out. Again, thanks, Leslie. It's been awesome. On behalf of everyone who is listening, they will agree with me. It's been insightful. It's been fun. It's been really interesting. So thank you. It's been great having you on. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of B2B Content Strategist. Do let me know what you thought of our conversation by getting in touch with me on social media. You'll find Content 10X on all the social platforms or search for Amy Woods, CEO of Content 10X on LinkedIn. To find out more about streamlining your content marketing processes and specifically about content repurposing, check out our website, content10x.com, where you'll find information and resources that will help you achieve more with your content more efficiently. And if you're looking for a partner to outsource your content repurposing and distribution to, get in touch as we offer a world-class, fully end-to-end, done-for-you content repurposing service. Thanks again for listening to this episode and I'll catch you in the next one.